Welcome, my friends. Welcome back to the Gaming Galleon. I'm Captain Raz, a pirate who sails from adventure to adventure with you aboard in hopes for laughs. Well, that's probably asking too much. <laughs> in hopes for smiles, maybe a chuckle here and there. And of course, by God, booty. That's what it's really all about, isn't it? I mean, that's what we're really here. Nobody really wants to, to, to reminisce or hear about exotic locations, adventure. You know, nobody wants to play video games. Really, what we want is to get into the booty, don't we? Well, my friends, that's not how we're. Unfortunately, you're going to have to deal with adventure. You're going to have to deal with reminiscing. You're going to have to deal with experience, experiencing exotic locales, and of course, video games. All of these things are things that I love to celebrate here in the Galleon. Not to mention, the best we save for last. The bag that tells no tales, where you, my friends, get to take hold of the helm of the ship. And ask me, the humble Captain Reeves, a question about gaming life or what have you where do we find ourselves today well it's coming up in the holiday season fall has become fall is fall is upon us leaves are beginning to become brittle not falling yet but you can see them turning beginning to get not cold not brisk but uh manageable it's not humid, it's not sweaty, it's warm. It's just the beginning of the long, dark Moria, otherwise known as Midwestern. But we're not near, uh, well we are, I guess we are, I guess this is the Midwest. Things get a little sketchy when you have to start activating the ship's uh, parallel dimension generator. Uh, it's hard to, to really judge longitude and latitude. Longitude and latitude. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chicago Public Schools. Uh, when you're trying, when you're, you know, not even in the same plane of existence. So, but if I were to guess, I think our location would be in this world's uh, Midwest. It's the country. It's calm. People here move a little bit slower. And they have a little bit of a twinkle in there. We're actually uh, just outside Spooky Forest, standing legendary tree called Spooky Old Tree. In the world, Berenstein Bear. Oh, I gotta get that sticker off. Is there here the Berenstein Bears? Well, let me tell you something. You have a kid, or you want to feel like a kid, you need one of these. The Barons. Spooky old tree. This is a, a family classic. Certainly one that I grew up with. And my sister I had a book that no doubt my darling niece and nephew were growing up to to this day. Although this one may be a little a little spooky for their their formative years. I'm not sure. You want to read a little bit? Three little bears. One with a light. One with a stick, and one with a rope. A spooky old tree. There's more to it than that. <laughs> but we'll get into that as we play, because this is actually a video game. Can you believe it? They actually made a video game out of a, I mean, 
I guess a famous book, but a famous book among kids. Uh, this book was made, jeez. Nineteen seventy eight. Wow, I had no idea this was that, that old of a book. Nineteen seventy eight. So what is that? Thirty years old? Forty years old? Forty years old. Um, I mean the, the Bernstein Bears. There's uh, they've got dozens of books. I mean, I'm not going to say hundreds, but dozens, and they deal with things like you know, uh, getting lost. Uh, not talking to strangers, uh, you know, uh, spoiled birthday, you get to, or, you know, too much birthday, uh, you know, when a kid gets too much cake, too much of what he wants, all of a sudden he's having a tantrum, he's crying, you know, um, you know, get, trying to get the new toy. And then, of course, there's, there's fun ones about Christmas and Halloween and spooky. So when we found the spooky old tree by Nameco, the Bernstein Bears spook you'll tree in a lot months, months back. I always thought, okay, we got to play this one. Eventually, we're going to have to get it. Because I'm, I can't imagine what the game would be like. I knew the book back to front. I'm not going to bore you with reading the rest of it. Maybe we'll read the end. But we just don't have time for that kind of thing. We've got other stuff to do. So why don't... We head over into the spooky old tree. We've got Fred, brother and sister, sitting just outside the tree here, ready to go in. Let's do a little exploring. Hopefully we don't get too many bumps and bruises along the way. And once we're ready for a break, hit open the chest. How's that sound, okay? All right, where's my harp? It's name code's The Bernstein Bears, Spooky Old Tree. I haven't even said for the platform, have I? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not for the Neo Geo, I'll tell you that much. Bernstein Bears, Spooky Old Tree for the Game Boy Advance. Let's get started. So here we go. Once again, we've got brother and sister and Fred. Fred's in the green. And uh, this game kind of works like the Lost Vikings. And I don't know if you ever played that, but that was for the Super Nintendo. And basically, it's three guys who have to work together to get to the level. Now, Fred here has got that rope. He's the only one who can make it all the way up here. And luckily, he's got some acorns. Oh my gosh. Did I just fall? Oh, okay. I, I just hit this lever, which dropped on that bridge. All right? That's what we've seen so far. We're just going to keep going here with Fred. I had some technical difficulties today. I can't seem to get the, uh, the music running, but, you know, I, I almost feel like that's a blessing because... You know, here we are, we're at the beginning of the Halloween season. I always like to start with something spooky and cute. Not not necessarily scary. Uh, but, you know, the spooky old tree is certainly a, a very scary, a spooky story, uh, for Americans at least. Yeah, maybe even in, in, in Europe. I don't know how far, far that book reaches. Maybe all over the world. I mean, it's been, it's a 40-year-old book, spooky old tree. But, uh, I, you know, as for setting the seat, setting the atmosphere of us being in a, a dank, dark, you know, tree, uh, I will tell you, I can hear the music personally through my headphones, and you ain't missing much. All right, in, in fact, I would say it has, it, it invokes little to no fear, oh, or spookiness in me. Oh my God, I did that, though. Are you kidding me? Oh boy. All right, I'm sorry about that. Sister, sister got hit by a a ten foot 
cockroach there. Or is it a mosquito? Or a mosquito. Can you imagine? It just occurred to me this thing is like... Uh, like the roaches are one thing. Now I'm now I'm noticing there's mosquitoes that are like you know what three feet tall. How long does that uh, make a sucker, man? Can you imagine? Dude, that's crazy. Mosquitoes. Don't get me started on mosquitoes. Oh, you know I you know this is cute. This is uh, oh I did it again. Actually, I actually tried to, there we go, tried to attack, it didn't let me, there we go. Alright, now if you're wondering what sister's ability is, she can jump longer than the other two. Plus she's got that stick. And you've got brother here. Brother's our strong man, he can move boxes. We're gonna open up this area for him. Alright, let's go. For gosh sake, because we want to get to this level, why? Cause you know what's gonna happen after that? A little something, something called the booty segment. You ever hear of it? Have you ever heard of it in your life? Well, if you haven't, you're in for a treat. A little history, maybe. But by God, we're gonna have some treasure. And what adventure would be complete without treasure? Hey. Can we get this uh, wall put down here, Fred? Oh boy. Oh boy. There we go. Uh, you guys want to know what the power ups do? I think it's like 100, 100 feeds of candy, free life, 10, 10 honey pots. You get a free life. And that might be all. That may be it. Get this box for us. There we go. All right, Fred going in. Sister going in. Huzzah! All right, I think that's it. Beware of the roots. They bite the bears. All right, we'll be back with them. That's the Bernstein Bears. Sand sound, trust me. Like I said, again, you're not missing anything. Uh, you know, that's kind of something I, I would say about Namco and Namco in general. Uh, you know, not to start throwing stones. But uh, when I think good soundtracks are good, you know, companies that make awesome soundtracks, memorable soundtracks, soundtracks we celebrate throughout the years. Anybody celebrating anything from Namco? I mean, any uh, the Pac-Man fever? That's it. That's all I can think of. Throwing it out there. I play Namco games all the time. Don't get me wrong. Just saying. Where's the music, guys? Feel free to contradict me. Okay. Look, we're pirates. All right, we like adventure. We like living on big wooden ships. We like uh, jawing with beautiful lasses and down in, you know, whatever drink is in front of us. Eventually. But really, at the end of the day, the reason we deal with the scurvy, we deal with the dirty clothes, we deal with the rats, and we deal with the uh, the ships without rum. Right over there, my friends. The booty. The treasure. Let me tell you about this deal. Got this out of Lafayette, Indiana. We've been there before. They have one game store there, but for for whatever reason, the regional managers have not come on to, come down on these guys like a ton of bricks to overcharge and overprice everything. They're still pricing stuff for the same price that they would price a load game. They're still pricing it if it's got the box and the manual, same price. And as for Atari games, generally, they couldn't care less. So every time I'm in there, despite the fact that they have a shelf stocked 
Behind glass, mind you. Which is adorable. Uh, behind glass, stocked to the top with Atari games. They've been sitting there for months, if not years. That doesn't stop me from going there every time. Being greeted by my first name, they know me that well. And then saying, hey guys, so what do you got sitting back there in the old Atari section? Because every time, every time I go, they have like two, three boxes sitting on the ground behind where they work, behind the counter. And that's that seems to be like their Atari overflow area. They've got wall-to-wall -wall racks of places to, to shelf GameCube games, PlayStation 2 games, DVD games. But when it comes to Atari games, that, that, that's apparently a platform that doesn't even deserve a shelf. So they just put it in a box. They've got like two, three boxes of, of Atari games. And every time I go there, I say, hey... Can we see what's in there? Can I see those? Can you pull those Atari boxes out for me? And every time I get the same answer. Oh, well, it's it's really about the same stuff you saw uh, last time. You know? Uh, and... Uh, I'm like, every time I'm like, guys, every time you tell me that, and every time there's something just a little different in there. Now, I try to say it nicely. You want to talk to, you want to, talk to these people as nicely as possible. Feel free to be, you know, feel like you act, act dumb. Always be polite. You know, even though you're in the right, doesn't mean you need to flaunt it. You're just there for the goods. So try and be as easy on these guys as possible. So I'm usually like, yeah, you're right. Uh, but, you know, it's funny. Every time I look, there always seems to be something I haven't seen before. So the guy's like, so we're, wa we're walking back. We had been, like, in the middle of the store, but I think we were looking into, maybe I had pulled a Nintendo game or something. Oh, uh, before this happened, before we got to the Atari stuff, I said, you got anything in the back? And usually in the back, he's got some, they've got some games that have been, pulled out, or have been bought, but haven't been put on the shelves. And that's a good way to get, like, the, the good stuff, or anyone else has seen it. And so he did. He had, like, some stacks of N64 games to show me, a couple stacks of Super Nintendo games, a couple of Nintendo games, and then a boxed Mario Party 3 for the, the, Nintendo, or the Nintendo 64. Now, we have Mario 3, and I'm really not that big into boxes. In fact... I think Nintendo 64 boxes are horrid. I think they look terrible. I don't think those have aged well at all. <coughs> but I did uh, I did open it up to see if the manual was in there. Because it felt chunkier than just if a game and a manual was in there. It felt like there was more. So I open it up, pull out the game, pull out the manual, and then I pull out something else. And I'm looking at this, and I'm like, this isn't for I don't know how long it's been sitting in this box with Mario Party 3, but it's not for Mario Party 3. And I say, hey, can I have this? It's just an extra manual for a game that's not here. And he's like, yeah, no problem. You guys want to know what this is? You guys want to see some history? Table of contents here, no label. Which is probably a big reason why it ended up in our hands because no one ever really thought to look and see what this thing actually is. Should I read off a little bit? Table of contents. <laughs> I don't want to go to that one just to, right away. How about the dwarf cave? Go shopping in Elfland. Return Matoya's crystal. Through the Titan's tunnel. Solve the mystery of the earth cave. And then finally, the one that's right here on the top. Now to begin our Final Fantasy adventure. Folks, this is the manual for the original Final Fantasy for the Nintendo Entertainment System. How about that, huh? Sitting in the box of a Mario Party 3, for whatever reason. 
How long has it been there? I have no idea. But he gave it to us, just threw it in. I never really revealed what it was, and I think that's important. Now, I don't think this guy would have nickel and dimed me. I think he would have given it to me every way, every either way, but not everybody's that cool. So if you find something like this, don't ever be like, the Final Fantasy Manual. Can I hate it? Can I hate it? You say, this isn't, I have this game at home, but you don't have it here. Can I have this? Is that how that works? So that's how the, game, the, the, the visit started. Then I did it once around the store. I think, uh, I didn't really see anything. And then I said, I came back and I said, you got any Atari stuff? They're doing the whole, uh, you know, we don't have anything. And I said, are you sure? And that's when I look over at those boxes behind them. And I said, are those boxes Atari games? And the guy looks two feet behind him on the floor. Here's two stacks of boxed Atari games. I was like, oh, just so. It's like every time, every time. I seem to be the only person in the Midwest who cares, or at least the only one who goes to the store who cares. Who knows how long those box games have been sitting there, but apparently they weren't important enough to put in the, the Atari shelf. But we got them. We didn't get all of them, and we'll get into that soon enough. But uh, most of these we got for a song. So how about we head back to 1978, which, you know, strangely enough... is when the spooky old tree was released. Let's head back to 1978 and look at some original boxed Atari games that we got for a song. Let's check it out. All right. Uh, this was the only loose that we picked up. It's one we've been after for a while. They had it for $3. Uh, not bad. This one's a little harder to find. It's the... You got Pac-Man on the Atari, which sucked. Miss Pac-Man, which wasn't bad at all. And then you got Junior Pac-Man. I'm not exactly sure where Junior Pac-Man ranks in that um, trilogy. But uh, for three bucks, you know, we have, we've actually been actively looking for this one for years. Never seen it. Never seen it. If we've seen it, it certainly wasn't for three. So, which is high for an Atari game. That gives you an idea of how hard it was to find that we're paying $3 on it. Uh, are any of these games going to knock your socks off? A couple. But most of these are, are super common. Golf. You'll notice the price. 99 cents. A dollar. Most of these we got for a dollar. You got the game floating around down there. Let's see what it is. Exciting golf label. I don't think this is a manual. I've not seen the manual in here, but I like that color. And there's a good chance we have the manual. We actually have a stack of Atari um, that we got probably from the same store years ago. Uh, kaboom! Boom! It's Kaboom! This is a game that's really, you're not, you're not going to be able to play anywhere else except for the Atari. Don't try and emulate this. You may, be, you may have the program, but you don't have the, control, the right controller. 99 cents. Alright, here we go. Bowling. Check out that mustache. I love it. Must he's got the mustache and then the, the orange cashmere sweater there. But uh, you can't get enough of the, this Atari box art. Activision game here, Sky Jinx. I don't, I don't know that I've played this. We have it. I've seen it around. I mean, it doesn't look that exciting to me to be like planes and a, a, a parachute. I don't, I don't know. Hot air balloon, I should say. Uh, what a beautiful day for the championship of air races, but alas, your mortal enemy, dastardly Dumont Doolittle has cunningly arranged for a hot air balloon rally to float across directly in your flight path. Okay. You're avoiding hot air balloon. I'm going to look for the manual here. 
because Activision manuals were already always kind of a kind of a treat. Let's see what this one looks like. Not not that big of a deal actually. Oh, this is just an advertisement. I don't even know if I don't see a manual. A manual. All right, whatever. Uh, Chopper Command, decent shooter. Decent shooter. Better than you expect. Not too bad. Another Activision game. Looks like this guy made uh, Bob Whitehead. He made he made Sky Jinx and this. A lot of Activision games here, which is cool because a lot of people argue they're they were the best uh, when it came to making these, and none of these we hit. So, really nice box here. Skiing. Ninety nine cents. Definitely have skiing. Dragster. <laughs> they were trying new stuff back then. All right. What can I say? Is this like the first split screen game ever made? Dragster. Conceived and designed by David Crane. He made Pitfall. Ne really needs to see their names on the back. Let's take a look at the difference between an Activision game, the back of an Activision game, and Combat, which is like the quintessential Atari game made by Atari. Right back here it says, right off the top, in big bold, conceived and designed by David Crane. What do we got on the, on the front, on the back of an Atari game? Uh, Atari Corporation... Consumer Division, Sunnydale, California. And no, no, all I have is where, where to buy these games. Nothing about who made them. Which is a big reason why a lot of the guys who founded Activision started Atari and jumped ship from Atari to go make their own video games. Because they weren't getting any credit. Look at that box art, though. Pretty cool. Again, all these games we had, but man, at a buck... We didn't have these boxes. The, the art alone, I think, is worth it. All right, so the next game we bought for the Atari 2600, we paid $12 for? $12? Look, man, you just, you just walked away with a stack of Atari games at a dollar each. Why in God's name do you feel you need a $12 Atari game? I mean, get some perspective. Well, this isn't any kind of any run of the mill Atari game. Ladies and gentlemen, a rarity among rarities. Phaser Battle. Phaser Patrol? Phaser Patrol. <coughs> Look at how big the box is. Look at that. About twice the size of the box we've been looking at, isn't it? What about the back? Well, it looks like a space shooter. Nothing crazy out of whack. Right? However, there's more to it than just the game. This comes with something called... Super... Acadia. This is a peripheral for the Atari 2600. Those of you who may have know about Sega, have heard of the Sega 32X. Sega 32X plugged into the Sega Genesis and essentially gave you uh, access to a host of other games that were superior in graphics and technology. The Supercharger was very much the same thing. You plug the supercharger into the Atari 2600, and then now you are you have access to a host of games that otherwise you would not. Games that again were superior generally to the Atari 2600. Fascinating, huh? Well, how did it work? What does it look like? Well, let's take a look. There she is in there. Supercharger by Arcadia. As you can see, it looks like an Atari game. However, things get a little dicey here. When you look at the rest, you got 
handle that kind of reminds me of a Magnavox 2 game. And then you've got this curious looking cable that, you know, if I were to estimate what that's for, is that audio out? To a cassette player? It couldn't be. Got our trusty cassette player here, don't we? What would you look at that? You want to see what a, 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 a game for the Starcade look like? You want to see what Phaser Patrol looks like? Check it out. Shout outs to Journey. Phaser Patrol comes in cassette tape format. How about that? So, so you take your Atari 2600, you pop in the Starcade, you, pl you plug the Starcade into your cassette player, and then you put Phaser Patrol into the cassette player, press play, turn on the Atari, boom, you're in. They basically made this thing to combat, you know, uh, for, for people who were fed up with having to buy new technology for their kids. They just bought them an Atari. Now they want a computer. Buy, buy the Starcade. Comes with Phaser Patrol. You already get a game with it. And the games cost around 15 bucks. At least they did back in 1970, whatever. Maybe 82. I don't know when this thing came out. So that was $12 for that. Was it worth it? Trust me. <laughs> if you knew about the scarcity of the supercharger, you'd understand why I was willing to drop 12 bucks on it. In addition, they had games exclusive to the, the supercharger. We picked up a couple. For a dollar, we're back to dollar world. You've got Fireball. Again, in, in cassette format. Man, these things look like they just come out of somebody's, like, gremlin. Wow. And it appears to have boobs. So, you know. Full featured game. I don't really know how this game... I believe this game plays like, um... What's it called? Uh, it's kind of like an Arkanoid clone breakout maybe phaser patrol plays like you know star raiders for the atari uh and then one more game now they had five on this one i got five on it uh escape from the mind master now we dropped another five here because we're buying a platform that we're never going to have any games for ever again. At least now we got three games for it. I was willing to spend the five since I'd have the Supercharger. I believe they maybe made about 10 games for the, the Supercharger, maybe 15. There's actually an RPG that looks awesome for it. I kind of wish that was there. It wasn't. Uh, we did leave one of these behind. Picked up three of them. There, I believe there were four um, Supercharger games. We left one behind, it was, get this, Communist Mutants from Outer Space. I'm not kidding. Communist Mutants from Outer Space. Uh, it's basically a Space Invaders clone, so gameplay, I wasn't really too worried about it. Uh, but the box was really sweet, and they were asking $25 on it. That's not going to happen. We spent 12 on the stupid Supercharger. You know, we're already in it. Twelve, set five for whatever masters. You know, seventeen bucks we spent on this thing. Eighteen bucks. I wasn't going to spend more than than that just for one game. Just wasn't worth it, even if it's a cool name. And it's, I'm sure it's worth more than than the twenty four. You know, but is that really something I want to go through the trouble of trying to flip? Not really. And it, uh, no, we didn't. We just. We didn't need it. 
Something's been just left on the table. If they're going to overchar, if they're going to give, you know, price going to be too high, just leave behind. All right, finally, we've got a few more here. All of Dollar, Berserk. Do, 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 do. We are number one. Super Breakout. This is for the 5200. Whoops. Get that. Uh, asteroids. I think we may have this. Box form. I'm not sure. <coughs> Video pimple. And then finally, this pack. Great game in here. All right, so what do we get? We, what do we spend here? These were, you know, 90% of these were a dollar a game. One, two, three, four, five. Put the supercharger stuff there for now. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Another three bucks on this. Sixteen. And then eighteen on this hull of a loop. Eighteen plus sixteen, about forty bucks. I believe I walked in there and I had uh I think I had like twenty dollars in credit initially going in. And I was already kind of strapped with cash, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to keep myself budgeted. We're just going to use the credit that's in there. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. It's fine. We already, we already made it back, but, you know, what are you going to do? Okay, we're way over. God, we've got to be way over. Uh, yeah, we've got 20 minutes left on the show, right? Let's get back to Spooky Old Tree. Then we'll uh, head back. If you want to send me a question for the mailbag at the end of the hour, the bag tells no tales, uh, anything at all. If you want to ask me, feel free. If not, we'll just dig our hand in the bag and ask that. All right, let's get back to it. It's Berenstein Bears, the spooky old tree for the Game Boy Advance. Let's head back in there. All right. Oof. All right, here we go. All right, killing roaches, no problem. This reminds me of, I don't know, grabbing all this candy. Reminds me of trick-or-treating. Back in the 90s, I don't know what it was like for you guys, but, uh, man, did I live in the area for it. I lived on, uh, like a suburban block in Chicagoland. And, uh, the, the block was right across the street from a, a forest preserve. And it was, like, kind of an untamed forest preserve because, like, I don't know, maybe, like, 50 years prior, it was like this massive, massive horse horse racing coliseum that, that burned down. So now it's just like this, this prairie. It was almost like post-apocalyptic. You'd find like, you know, big, um, big patches of, uh, leave me alone, bad touch. Ugh. Big patches of asphalt, uh, among like tall grass. Uh, you know, over the summer, we'd usually go out there for, ugh, bottle rocket fights and stuff. But, you know, now that it's the fall, it was like the perfect time to, to get lost in the, in the woods. Elevator's open for the... All right, let's see what we got here.
Oh, we need Brett. We need sister. We need a little sus. Come here, little sus. Now, I don't know if my, my sister lets uh, my nephew and... Uh... Come on, that was cheap. My nephew and, and niece. Well, my niece wouldn't be able to understand. But my nephew, uh, I, want, I don't know if she lets him read the spooky old tree yet. Uh, it's a creepy book. That's for sure. Um, but I will say that he reads the Berenstein Bears. And if you got kids and you don't have any Berenstein Bears books floating around, uh, I totally suggest them. I mean, they, I grew up with them and I, I still think of them very fondly. That's not right. It's getting super confusing. Here we go. As for this game, do I suggest it? You're not going to find it for much. That's for sure. Uh, if you if you see it for more than five dollars, you're paying too much. I'm stuck here. Somebody's got to get me out of here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm with a cough. There we go. There we go. Thank you, sister. All right, there we go. And so, yeah, I'll be spending uh, Halloween with the family this year, which is neat. And I see, uh, you know, my nephew and niece dress up as. As for me, I don't know. You guys got any suggestions? What do you think I could do? I mean, is it ba if you're a pirate, does it cop out to be a pirate? I mean, that's kind of like when a doctor or a nurse dresses up like a nurse, right? I guess I'd be copping out. I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, honestly, I usually work or, you know, I'm unavailable for, uh, for Halloween. So uh, it's going to be interesting. I don't know. Let's see what happens. All right, there she is. Hey, get, are we not through this yet? Oh, okay, Fred. We need you to get that lever. There we go. Uh, yeah, as for suggesting the game, I mean, if you're familiar with the property, I haven't played the whole thing. I don't know what's in store for us, but I have a feeling it's going to be pretty much pretty pedestrian, you know, from here on out. This was designed to be a kid's game, so... uh you know, only so much is going to be happening here. Let's do this last one here. And then we'll come back and we'll wrap up the show. Oh, okay, finally a little variation here. Kind of like a bonus level. As I said, the candy, you know, surprise, surprise, gets you free life. Oh, as does the, the honey. Oh, no. Oh, my God. It's, ter it's terrible he's crying. How many? That's that's uh that's pretty rough. You know a lot of video game characters that just fall over and start weeping when they don't they don't make the cut. Bernstein bears, you know they got nothing to hide. Oh, that's it. Can I go one more time? This is now this is addictive. Let's see if I can make it. No, no, uh, no buttons here. Just press them left and right. Ugh. Why did uh, brother have to go on the chopping block here? What? But they couldn't. Uh, they couldn't throw sister down the hall. Oh, all right. Well, we'll leave it there. All right. We're done. We're done with the day. Oh, hey, oh, yeah, hey, oh. here thank you Baron Steambeers thanks for the uh, thanks for the memories you guys want to see how the book ends can I spoil it for you spooky old tree Baron Steambeers be a nice package deal get your get your niece or nephew uh, the book 
you know, a nice Game Boy Advance SP. And, uh, you know, Bernstein Beer's the game. You know, probably spending on better things, huh? You're like, yeah, Rez, I'm gonna, I'm... <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna spend seventy dollars on that when I could, you know, be giving it to their savings or something. All right, here's the exciting ending. Spooky old tree. Up a ladder. Through the floor. Down a slide. And out the door. Three little bears running fast. Home again. Safe at last. There you go. That's the spooky. Classic. All right, let's hit the box here. Put the back. All right. Heading over to the back that tells no tales here where you, yeah, you, you ever want to be a part of the show? You ever want to be a part of Galleon history? It's easy. All you got to do is send me a message. Send me a question. It could be about gaming, about life, about piracy, you know, about what your neighbor's doing when he's banging on the wall all night, anything at all. Let's see what this person has to say. This comes from Game Horizon. Game underscore Horizon. And he, he or she writes, With the recent announcement of Streets of Rage 4, what other titles from the Genesis library do you feel they should bring back and what titles deserve a remaster? The Immortal would be a great remaster, huh? That'd be pretty cool. Do some new levels from the Immortal. I mean, well, that's a tough, that's a, that's a hard call, though, because, like, the Immortal, every level intertwined with one another, so it's not like you just add on, a, add on a little bit. But to see some of the graphics remade would be pretty neat. I'm a little worried about what they do with the music. Hey, what else would I play? What else would I like to see? Um... Maybe like a, a Golden Axe trilogy, where it's a new campaign, but you can choose from all of the characters among across the three. I guess there weren't that many characters, but Golden Axe 3 had some exclusive characters that 1 and 2 didn't. Uh, there was also different moves for each character, depending on the game. So it'd be neat to see some sort of Golden Axe update that was uh, worthy. Um, maybe add in some new writable characters, maybe... An open world, uh, hub world would be pretty cool. Um, anything else? Any the RPGs need to be redone? I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. Maybe like a Thunder Force compilation, that'd be pretty hot. I don't know. Be nice to see re-release of Truxton because it's really expensive, which is a pretty high-end shooter. Um, so yeah, Golden Axe. I'd like to see Golden Axe get some more attention again. It got kind of beat out when East Rider came out for the 360 and the PS3. Um, the franchise pretty much fell apart after that. I'd like to see that that Golden. Axe. I'm I'm a huge Golden Axe fan. So and maybe some more Legend of Oasis. Legend of Oasis is pretty awesome. Uh, they've even gotten to play a little bit of the Saturn one. Oh, Eternal Champions. Can we get Eternal Champions back, please? Can I get Eternal Champions with online play? That's all I really want. Just give me Eternal Champions with online play. If you don't know anything about Sega, scratching your head about what I'm talking about, do yourself a favor. Get yourself the, the Sega Genesis Classics for all the modern systems. It's on Xbox One, right? Lord, it should be. It's definitely on Steam and PS4. It's 30 bucks. It's online play. You can play with your friends. I mean, 
every genre you can think of, well, they don't have racing. They need a racing game, but I mean, what a great compilation. Do yourself a favor, you know, learn a little history and have some fun with some games that don't take, you know, too much of your time to, to get into. Get yourself that classic collection. All right. Uh, I got a, I kind of lost track of time. We may even be light. I think we may be a little light, but uh, that's okay. I've got more adventures to come. So let's leave it here for now. I want to thank you for coming on board the old ship, kicking up your feet, having a little grog, watch me struggle for a children's game. <laughs> struggle. Oh, it was a pleasure. And I hope to do it again with you very soon. So until next time. Oh, for me. Until next time. I wanna do to ye fair Spanish maidens. I wanna do ye ladies of Spain. For we received orders for to escape the spooky old tree. Lo, nevermore shall we see ye all gone. Maybe October, but it's still hot out. Oh, that's good. You keep your powder dry, ladies.